Now, the interesting thing about this image is that other than Jeremiah Kioni, who else do you know in this image? None of these people surrounding Jeremiah Kioni are known politicians. And that is because all the people that you know have left the party. Now, he has hired a... Uh, hired Makanga, maybe a hawker, maybe some of them have been paid 500 to show up and wear the, the brand, the Jubilee brand. But as of right now, everywhere Jeremiah Kioni goes, there is no recognizable figure within Jubilee that goes with him. Jeremiah Kioni seems to be a politician who has lost a touch of reality, despite his own ship colliding with an iceberg and going down. Now in this video, I want us to look at the reasons behind the fall of Jeremiah Kioni's flagship, which is Jubilee. But before we get into that, if you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Now, political trouble started for Mr. Jeremiah Kioni the moment he refused to ditch Jubilee Party. All he had to do was switch allegiance, join UDA, and he would be the MP of Ndaragua today. Instead, he chose to tough it out and fight it out within the ranks of Jubilee when he knew very well there was a serious wave that was coming to unseat the big boys in the country. On top of losing his seat as MP of Ndaragua, he has lost all the top brass politicians within the ranks of Jubilee. Uhuru Kenyatta has retired, David Murade is in hiding, Rafael Tuju is having his own problems because his name is popping up every other day within the tribunal. So he's just keeping a low profile and avoiding any conflict whatsoever. He didn't even go to the family home of Magoha. Under different circumstances, he'd have been there. On top of that, the leaders who are being groomed to take over the leadership in Jubilee have also jumped ship. The likes of Sabina Chege are nowhere to be seen. Kanini Kega has left. As at now, it's just Jeremiah Kioni and Jeremiah Kioni himself. I saw Jeremiah Kioni giving a speech recently where he was castigating the government and talking about how the withdrawal of the security of the former head of state is crossing the red line and so on and so forth. Now, the message was not the issue in that particular speech, at least as far as I am concerned. He's doing what he's born to do. He's a politician. He picked that side and he's pushing that side's agenda. And that's fine. But when he was giving that speech, I noticed something that is very, very much peculiar. I won't play you the whole speech. In fact, I won't play you the speech. I'll just show you an image. It should be on your screen right now. Now, the interesting thing about this image is that other than Jeremiah Kioni, who else do you know in this image? None of these people surrounding Jeremiah Kioni are known politicians. And that is because all the people that you know have left the party. Now, he has hired... a. Uh, hired Makanga, maybe a hawker, maybe some of them have been paid 500 to show up and wear the, the brand, the Jubilee brand. But as of right now, everywhere Jeremiah Kioni goes, there is no recognizable figure within Jubilee that goes with him. When he was at Kamkunji, there was no one else from Jubilee that is known. When he was at Jakaranda, same thing. It has reached a point, he's the only popular person in the entire party. Jeremiah Kioni cannot fail to go to a presser and say, that I will send XYZ to go represent me. If that other person goes, whatever it is that they share on that platform is not going to get national coverage at all. Let's be fair to the man. If Jeremiah Kioni goes to give a statement on behalf of Jubilee, whether it is a correct or incorrect statement, it doesn't matter. It will get national traction. He is good for it. But the people around him, no one knows them. No one has ever heard of them. We don't know if they elected MCAs or if they are hired people to just fill the stage so that he doesn't look like he's alone because politics is all about perception and numbers. So that just goes on to prove and to showcase how Jubilee has fallen. In the past, you'd see Jubilee coming out, even when they had a fallout with the DP and his people, the former DP. They still had a semblance of some party. You'd see people that you know. You'd see David Murade, Rafael Tuju is there, Sabina Chege, and all these other people that at least you can say I know XYZ on that platform. But now it's just an empty shell and that presser just continues to prove that more and more. But I could be wrong. If you know any of those people, just comment and let us know in the comment section. Are they uh, sitting MCAs? Are they uh, former MPs? Who are they? Because nobody knows who these people are. The other challenge that is rocking Jeremiah Kioni's boat is the fact that they can't afford rent. Up until now, Jubilee had one of the most prestigious headquarters of any party in Kenya, but they couldn't sustain it. 
they are having a hard time paying rent. That's because all resources were diverted to the Azimio campaign. And after losing, they have no way of recouping the money. They owe 435 million in rent arrears to the point they've had to move the party from Pangani all the way to Kileleshwa. Now those just so happen to be factors that Jeremiah Kioni could not control. You can't force members to stay within Jubilee. You can't also tamper with reality to make your political formation cross the finish line. Those are things which are left to the citizens and God in general to influence uh, the outcome. But there just so happen to be intrinsic problems that are facing the captain of the flagship that has since been sunk. And the first challenge is that the very captain seems to be out of it. Ray Lodinga comes out and says that he won with 8 million votes. William Ruto had 5 million votes. Now, even he knows that's ludicrous. It's not true. But Ray Lodinga is very tactical. He's actually lying and he's, he knows what he's doing. He's good for it. But Jeremiah Kioni actually believes those sentiments. He even believes that his own vote was stolen in Daragua. He believes he was rigged out. Even Babu Owino does not agree with those sentiments. He said as much on Twitter. So Jeremiah Kioni has lost a touch of reality. And that is another reason why Jubilee keeps sinking more and more. And it will be interesting to see where Jubilee ends up by the end of this year. And the other intrinsic problem of Jeremiah Kioni is the fact that he has agreed or let himself to be used as a hired political mercenary. He is currently fighting Ray Lodinga's and Martha Karua's war at the battlefront of Mount Kenya. Just do the math. Ray Lodinga doesn't go there anymore. Martha Karua doesn't go there. Kalonzo Musioka hasn't set foot there since the election. But they know very well that Jeremiah Kioni is someone who can be bought as a hired political mercenary. And you can see the type of work he is doing. After losing all his party members, the significant ones anyway, and after failing in the last general election, both he himself and the party in general and the coalition, he is still holding fort and moving forward. Why do you think that is? I think that he has been furnished with some monies. We saw Denis Itumbi reveal as much that there was a meeting for the top Azimio brass and they were discussing how to raise 15 billion and I believe it was actually raised. So some of these people are hired political mercenaries doing whatever it is they can to survive and tough it out for the next five years, because five years is a long time for a politician. If you've lost an election and you have nothing else going on, you're used to depending on the taxpayer, you'll need to find other means quickly to survive. And it seems he has found his own footing. Now, much as Jeremiah Kioni seems to be done and dusted, I don't believe any human being can be done away with. Let's see what he is planning. Perhaps he will switch sides, join Kenya Kwanza, find a way to work with the government, or to even win back his seat of MP. It'll be interesting to watch uh, what he's planning and what he's thinking. But that's just my opinion, guys. Do drop me your own comments in the comment section below. I'll do my best to read them and to give you a response. Now, in the event you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube. Search for David Wafula. Hit the subscribe button and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Alright guys, adios. Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings and queens, you are the real gem. Adios.